felt trapped and like everything that I did just made me more and more miserable. And so one day I just snapped and I started implementing these changes little by little. It just ended up making my life a whole lot better. With that being said, here are the small changes that I made in my life that made me a lot happier. There's this thing called the 1% rule that encourages us to make each day 1% better than the last. Because where most of us fail is we decide we're gonna go all in one day and then we just burn out. I've done that before and that's where I kept getting stuck in the cycle of misery. No matter what I tried, nothing was changing until I tried the 1% rule. You might not even notice any big difference in the beginning. I mean, take this for example. Let's say you wanna work out more. So one day I wake up and I'll put on my workout clothes. I don't even go to the gym that day. You know, that's, that's too hard. We're just gonna wake up and put on our gym clothes. That's 1% better than the day before. Next day, maybe we'll put on our gym clothes and then we'll have a smoothie. Again, we're not even going to the gym yet. Then the third day, we're gonna put on our gym clothes, we're gonna have a smoothie, and we're gonna drive to the gym. We're gonna show up. We don't have to work out if we don't want to that day though. Cause again, we're just focusing on making it 1% better than the last. So then maybe on the fourth day, I put on my gym clothes, I have a smoothie, I go to the gym, and maybe this time I decide to stay at the gym for 10 minutes just doing cardio. That's it. Soon enough, you'll find yourself spending 30 minutes to an hour at the gym, and you've created a habit out of it where you're no longer having to think about it. You actually enjoy the process. So make it easy for yourself. One thing I did was I moved. But before you close out of this video, let me tell you that it wasn't necessary. The issue was I was blaming my environment for the cause of all my misery. At the time I was a student at university and I hated what I was studying, I hated the school, I hated the administration, and consequently I hated the city, or so I thought. I basically decided that for as long as I would be in that city, I would hate my life. That proved to be extremely detrimental and completely unnecessary. So when senior year came around and I had the option to graduate early, I took that in a heartbeat. Graduating early meant I could get out of the city sooner. So I did just that. I graduated early and I moved back home with my parents in a completely different city that I really enjoyed. And yeah, sure, life got a lot better. But as fate would have it, I ended up returning to my university's city quite frequently for the next two years. And it really changed my perspective on things. Because now I was coming back as a visitor. I wasn't living there. I didn't have to study there. I wasn't a student. I was literally just there to enjoy myself. When I took all these other things that were making me miserable out of the equation, I realized that it wasn't the city at all. I just had decided to make these other things an excuse for why I hated the city. Because in those next two years, I realized there were a ton of cool parks that I'd never seen, nature trails. There's a really vibrant community of other creatives and professionals. I had a great music scene. All things that I completely just ignored during my time as a student. So yes, while moving cities was helpful for me to detach myself from the people there, from my misery and from my studies, it wasn't at all necessary because really what I needed to do was change the things that were in front of me. I think changing my major would have made a world of a difference and I would have been a lot happier there. Really analyze the source of your misery and ask yourself, is it really the environment, the city that I'm in that's causing me these issues? Or is there something else that I can target more specifically? Probably the most drastic change I made. I changed careers completely. I studied computer science in undergrad, but all throughout my university studies, I realized I didn't have a passion for it. But there was this like logical side of me that said, no, Tatiana, you should do this. You get job security, great benefits. This is a great career choice. It's gonna allow you to succeed and show other people what you're capable of. This was probably the biggest source of my darkness in college. I knew deep down, I wanted to do something that was a lot more creative. But my whole life I've been told that creative people don't make money. Because of this, I had no idea how I could actually make money in a creative career, much less what actual jobs were out there for creatives. So we stuck with it and I got my degree in engineering. I interned at wonderful companies. I got a six figure job offer from a great tech company as well. And I ended up turning them down because that was my breaking point essentially. I have a whole nother video on that so I'm not gonna dive deeper into it. While there's a lot of opportunity in the tech industry, I think I realized I didn't wanna be doing something as technical as I was. So that's when I moved back home with my parents, disappointed everyone around me and started over. For some time, I tried to look for a job in media and entertainment, but I realized that all the interviews I was getting, they were always trying to pigeonhole me back into the tech sector. So I used my resources and I worked for free as a graphic designer for a digital ad company. Cause I thought at this point that maybe I would enjoy graphic design. I realized I didn't like that either. That was a little bit too creative for me. Slowly I started sharing my journey on social media and eventually this landed me a job as a marketing coordinator for a luxury travel agency. I started learning everything about marketing 
marketing. I had my own business, so I was learning about it in that way as well. And things just started to blossom. And I felt that these were areas that I was able to have a much stronger impact because I felt more comfortable in my work. So that's where we are now. It's not a linear journey. I'm sure I'm still gonna be making changes here and there, but I feel as though a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders because I'm finally giving myself a chance to try something new. I've gotten so many great experiences that I literally have no regrets in my life right now. Everything that I've wanted to do, I've done. And I feel like that's something that not a lot of people can say. Let's talk about reading self-help books. Don't roll your eyes. I have been that person where I tried self-help books, but I would read them and I'd be like, this is stupid. This is not gonna help me. I don't understand how this is relevant to my life at all. And so naturally these books did nothing for me. When I started making other little changes in my life and I actually had an ounce of optimism in me, I reframed my mind and started reading these books again. I saw them in a completely new light. That sounds cheesy, but here's the thing. If you are open to receiving help, to receiving guidance, these books are actually effective. Growing up, you're only limited to your external influences. For me, it was more immediate influences, family, friends, social environments. Now I guess we have social media, so you're exposed to a lot more. But before that kept me in this little bubble. So if I didn't know a millionaire or a very successful business owner, I wasn't even gonna consider being in business to begin with. But now if I'm reading a book, now I suddenly have that guidance from somewhere, even if they're not there physically, mentally I have what they thought, what they went through, the steps that they took to get to where they are now. Start with books that interest you. For me, I started with the logical, analytical things. I started with money. Teach me about finance, teach me about taxes, teach me about starting a business and how that's gonna benefit me in the long term and get me out of the rat race. This made sense to me analytically. Once I warmed up to that idea and I started investigating more into these successful business owners, that's when I started realizing, oh, okay, they believe in this mindset work and they believe in manifestation and they believe in the power of thought. This sounds a little far out to me, but if they believe it and they're successful, there has to be some rhyme and reason to it. And little by little, the way you start to process things changes. You start to have a more optimistic look on things and you find out that self-development books can actually be really useful when it comes from the right author. Small but transformative change was re-exploring my hobbies and passions. Again, when I was in this state of full misery, I isolated myself from everyone. I became a hermit. I withdrew from all the clubs and organizations I was a part of. I just was so burnt out. It wasn't even about being lazy. It was just, I had no energy to give. I think it's important to be patient with yourself during this time though, because it will take some time before you get some of that energy back. You need to start seeing small doses of positive change already in order to be like reinvigorated and have the energy to go out and do these things. When you have that little glimmer of hope that like, okay, I am making these little changes. I'm actually no longer trapped and something's gonna work out. Now you can go out there and start exploring your hobbies. So this whole journey actually ended up coinciding with COVID, which was really strange because during this time, I started re-exploring my interest in art. I started drawing a ton. In fact, a lot of my social media started with me sharing a lot of the portraits of celebrities that I made. At some point, I tried to turn it into a business and because of that, it ended up me going into print on demand. It's just like the snowball effect where the more I did, the more I realized, oh, actually now I, I also enjoy entrepreneurship. I enjoy marketing and I enjoy creating content on social media. But I also enjoy reading, I enjoy music, I enjoy going to concerts, I enjoy editing photos. Realizing what my hobbies and passions were once again also helped direct where I was trying to take my career. I think that finding your hobbies and your passions just really helps you feel human again and just alive. Invest in yourself. What does that even mean? I learned the best investment I could ever make was investing in my own personal development. And you have to understand that I come from a very risk averse mindset where you have to be very careful with how you spend your money, use it wisely, make sure you have savings, which yes, I still agree with the savings part. But it's also okay to invest in these things that are gonna have an ROI that, are, that is much greater than your initial investment. Over the course of my two or three year long journey now, I've invested in courses on Amazon FBA, Kindle writing, manifestation, creating a business, on luxury travel. When it comes to personal development courses, it's also important though that you're choosing to learn from someone that you really trust. You enjoy their energy or is there some kind of disconnect? If there's a disconnect, they're not the right person for you to learn from. At least not if it's gonna cost you thousands of dollars. But it doesn't have to cost you thousands of dollars because a lot of these courses are now providing scholarships and that's how I've managed to do a lot of my personal development. I'm directly learning from people 
who have a lot more figured out than I have, who live a life that I want to live, who have the success that I want to have, who have the impact I want to have. And now they're saving me time, years even, of emulating their success. I'm not just talking about business success, I'm also talking about like internal success. The Manifestation Babe Academy course that I took absolutely transformed the way that I view life. I am now a much more positive person. I understand the power of my thoughts. And most importantly, understanding your limiting beliefs and why you have them to overcome them. When I started my journey, that sounded like a lot of bullshit. <laughs> Through me doing these 1% changes every single day, I gradually came to the acceptance of this mindset stuff. I was a much more pleasant person to be around, let's put it that way. Investing in yourself is also super valuable because of the networking opportunities that come from it. One, it shows that you're invested in your own growth, whether that's professionally or personally. Second of all, you start to attract more like-minded individuals, other people who are focused on growing and becoming better people. This is a really great environment to be in, to keep you uplifted, to have support, and to realize you're not on this journey alone. Thirdly, if you're going to in-person events or Zoom sessions where you're able to network, you start networking with people who are much further down the line than you. In other words, now you're friends with successful business owners and professionals making multiple six figures a month and people who travel for a living. You are exposed to a much greater variety of people that are there to inspire you and provide you with lots of guidance. My personal favorite investments have been the Creator Retreat with Jeremy and Angie and Manifestation Babe Academy with Catherine Zinkina. Not only did I learn a lot from the Creator Retreat, this was a hands-on workshop to understand everything about luxury travel. We got to stay at a luxury resort in Greece called Kalilo, absolutely beautiful and breathtaking, but also I managed to network with a ton of other amazing individuals. One of them even became my travel buddy when I traveled to France this past winter. And it was through Manifestation Babe Academy that I learned I even had that eating disorder and I allowed a hypnotherapist to help me overcome it. Had it not been for MBA, I never would have considered having a hypnotherapist treat me. So invest in yourself if you're worth it. Guys, I'm telling you, if you're very analytically minded, very logically minded, a lot of this advice is very uncomfortable I get it because I was super uncomfortable with it in the beginning too. But like I said, 1%, 1% every single day, give it a chance and you'll understand what I mean. So with that being said, one of the other changes that I made was I started practicing gratitude and I started journaling. What does practicing gratitude even mean? Like I just think about Thanksgiving where we go around the table and say what we're grateful for, what we're thankful for, something similar like that, but it doesn't have to be as public. Gratitude is say what you're grateful for, but the important thing here is tapping into that feeling when you're expressing what you're grateful for. That's the energy of gratitude. It's an energy state of great expansiveness and it's what allows a lot of people to attract abundance really, really quickly. The whole lucky girl syndrome that's going around right now on TikTok abides by this rule because to attract what you want, you have to be comfortable with the idea of not getting it also. It's when you enter this neutral state of whether I get this thing that I want, it will be great. But if I don't, I will also still be okay. That's when the changes start to happen. So gratitude is just a really great exercise to retrain your mind. Like I was someone who used a lot of negative self-speak. Every idea that I came up with, I would find its flaws. Every time someone did something, I'd point out things could have been done better. Through gratitude, you're retraining your mind to see the positive things in life so that you don't have such a negative outlook. This takes time. It is not gonna happen overnight where suddenly, oh my God, everything's beautiful and wonderful. No. Mm. It takes time. I love to practice gratitude right when I wake up. And one of the easiest ways of doing it if you don't physically want to write it down is I download the Calm app and you don't have to subscribe to it or anything. I literally have the free version and I go into the more section. Then I click on check-ins and there there's a section that says, what are you grateful for? I do this daily. It asks me for three things that I'm grateful for. I write them down, I tap into it and that's it, I'm done. It's an easy way to do gratitude and incorporate it into your morning routine. I wanna go further into it. I made my own PDF version that kind of serves as my daily planner that I fill out in the morning to set the right intentions for the day. Similarly, journaling is also super powerful. It doesn't have to be something you do every day, but it's a really great exercise to find guided prompts um, to which you can answer to and really dive deep into who you are, why you think the way that you do, what are thoughts and behaviors that have been implanted into you that simply aren't true and are the reasons that are keeping and holding you back. Journaling can be a very self-reflective and peaceful activity and also just helps you become very comfortable with yourself and your thoughts. No one needs to even know that you're journaling. Do it in private, do it right before you go to bed, do it in your car before you head off to work. This can be your little thing. And if it helps, to kind of get you through this uncomfortable mindset of like, you know, journaling is embarrassing. I don't like to tap into my feelings. Who even journals? Create an alter ego. In other words, name a different version of you that would go and journal and pretend you're that person when you go to do it. This just kind of helps 
distance yourself a little bit from the uncomfortable act until you're comfortable enough to embrace it. Let me say one more thing with journaling too, because I think I had the wrong idea of it before and it wasn't sustainable. When I would journal, I would use it as a venting session. I would fill out pages and pages for, of my notebook, of my journal, just venting what I was feeling. And I would also only use it when I was in a negative headspace. So I was using to let out all these negative emotions. It was an emotional release which is great, but because I only used it for that, I associated journaling for when times were rough in my life. And it was also a very tiring act because like I mentioned earlier in the video, I was doing 100% every single time I did it, which was a very tiring activity. That's why I love guided prompts so much because instead I'm actually answering a question, there's a proper intention and I'm only writing so much. I don't have to write essays. I recently bought some of this journal called Better Inside Than Out. It has a ton of really great introspective prompts for you to answer and really get to know yourself. And the last small change I made was I made my social circle a lot smaller. I'm an introvert. I benefit from having a small social circle. But what I mean by this is I kind of refined it to include the people that really have motivated me and inspired me in my life. If there were people in my circle that I felt were dragging me down or creating negative judgment or causing me anxiety all the time, I found a way to distance myself from them. And instead, I started giving my time and prioritizing my time to those who made me feel good in their presence. It can also be people who just have qualities in them that you really admire and would like to incorporate more in your daily life. For me, it's people who I find to be very caring, they're very thoughtful, maybe they're really great with other people and they're very empathetic. This is an area that I could be a lot stronger in. Maybe they're people who are really good at telling jokes or sharing stories. People who just make me laugh when I'm in their presence. There are so many reasons why people are valuable and to be admired. And those are the people that are very special to me and that I keep in my inner circle. And cutting people out isn't exactly easy. You can do the hard cutoff. I know that when you do that, I think it's a really great confidence booster because it shows that you respect yourself enough to put yourself first. But in some cases, that's a really drastic move and not necessary. You can just put some distance and you'll realize that the relationship will fade out over time anyway. The biggest takeaway is to realize that you are in control of your future. I know we all go through difficult situations sometimes and for some, their hardships are a lot more difficult than others, but know that no situation is ever permanent. In fact, I just finished reading a book that said unhappy people are those who see setbacks as something that ruined a good thing. The happy people are those that see setbacks as a blessing in disguise. In other words, they find meaning in this obstacle and in hindsight, see it as something that benefited them. I hope you keep that in mind next time you're going through a difficult time. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you so much for watching.